Hello and welcome. My name is Christina from Empowered Creator. I am a mindset and conscious manifesting teacher and coach, and this is my YouTube channel. Here I talk about all things law of assumption, mindset, conscious manifesting, the quantum universe, and a lot more. And my goal is to simplify everything without the fluff. So if you guys like this content and you would like to see more of it, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, comment on this video, like it, share it, and just stick around. Also, if you need any help with your specific situation, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, email coaching, small group coaching, as well as custom subliminals for whatever needs you may have. So if you're interested in any of these services, the links are below in the description box. You can click on them and they're going to take you to my website. With all that being said, let's dive into today's video. So today's video is about manifesting commitment with a specific person. If you have a specific person in mind, whether it's a friends with benefits and you are manifesting something exclusive with them, or maybe you're dating, but you want to go to the next level, you want them to do more, or maybe you're living together and they're just not proposing, whatever it is, whatever commitment means to you at this point, this video is for you. I'm going to discuss how to actually manifest commitment from a specific person with a specific person, how to go about it, how to get into the state of being the person who is being committed to. So, so the first point I wanted to make, and it's a very, very, very important point, and I suggest you don't skip it, because if you do skip it, your results, you might still see results, but they might be um, a little hot and cold, or you might see a change for the better, and then it changes back to the unwanted circumstance, um, or it may the change you are wanting to see may come, but it may actually not last. So obviously here we are manifesting long-lasting results, long-lasting change, sustainable change. We are not happy and content and satisfied with anything else. We want stable, solid, long-lasting and sustainable change. So if you have a specific person and they're not committing to you right now in the 3D reality and you're manifesting for that to change, the very first question to ask yourself, and I want you to be very, very honest with yourself about that, is are you actually committed to yourself? Are you actually the best version of yourself? Are you the person that you want to be in your career, in your work life, in your social life, um, in your fitness goals, perhaps, uh, in your hobbies, in your interests? Do you love your life? Are you happy with your life? Are you content with your life in general? Do you have perhaps goals that you're not pursuing for one reason or another? Do you have some dreams that maybe you're not working on? Maybe you're not pursuing, maybe you're not manifesting, maybe you're not, you're just sitting on them and just finding excuses or fearing to pursue them or in any event, you're just sitting back and not doing much about them or anything at all. Are you in that category? Are you the best version of yourself? Are you valuing yourself enough and are you loving yourself enough to actually give yourself the life that you want to have? In all areas of your life, regardless of your specific person, are you happy with your life? Are you happy with, have you fulfilled your dreams? Have you fulfilled your goals? Um, are you happy with the, with the direction your life is taking? Are you happy with how you look? Are you happy with the money you have? Are you happy with the friends you have and the social life you have? Are you happy with your immediate family even perhaps, your, your immediate family relationships? Are you in general happy and content with your life? Committing to yourself means that you commit to giving yourself the best life that you can have, the best life that you want, that is aligned with your desires, with your heart's true desires, your heart's pure desires, that is aligned with your goals, not where your family is telling you, not where society is telling you are the right goals for you, what you want, okay? It can be very different things. So are you aligned with your heart's desires? Are you happy with how your life is going? Are you happy with what you have in life? Once again, are you committing and have you committed to being the best version of yourself, to living the best life that you can have? I suspect, I'm not saying this is going to be the case for everyone, I suspect for a good number of you, the answer to that is going to be no. If you're, if you're going to be honest with yourself, 
I suspect for many of you, the answer is going to be no, that you haven't yet committed to yourself, that you are generally dissatisfied with your life, that there might be perhaps several areas, more than one areas in your life that you feel need improvement, and that maybe you're just living a mediocre life out of fear, out of holding yourself back from your dreams for whatever excuses your ego is giving you for not doing it. Um, just sitting back and just letting life pass you by, letting life happen to you instead of actually becoming the cause of your life. And because no area of our life is actually separate from the other areas of our life, they all bleed into each other, they all mingle with each other. It is very, very often the case that if we are dissatisfied in one or more areas of our life, that it impacts our whole life, including our relationships, including our romantic relationships, including our personal life, including how others treat us, including how we see ourselves in relation to others and what we assume and what we perceive in our relationship with others. And it's all a very interconnected thing. It's not, it might look like separate areas in your life, but they're actually all interconnected, which is why I'm emphasizing this and I'm saying again and again that it's very important that you realize that you need to commit to yourself first before you expect other people, including your specific person, to commit to you. You need to commit to being the best version of yourself and to living your best life, to living the life that's aligned with your heart's true desires, with your dreams, with your passions, with what makes you happy. And this is the best and most significant expression of self-love because you're going to hear a lot of things about self-love that maybe it's standing in front of the mirror and speaking to yourself lovingly. Maybe it's uh, writing love letters to yourself. Maybe it's pampering yourself, taking yourself out for a pedicure or just go on a date with yourself and all that. These are all very nice things. And if you feel like doing them, absolutely do them by all means. But ultimately, the best thing you can do to prove to, your, to yourself that you love yourself is to give yourself the best life that you can have, is to commit to yourself, to commit to becoming the best version of yourself. And another very important point that is very closely tied to what I just discussed, are you actually making room in your life for all the good things to happen to you, for all the good things to come in? So that can vary from person to person. It can take different forms. But for example, do you have a pile of messes in your home? Do you have a huge to-do list that keeps growing and it never gets tackled? And it just keeps growing day after day, day after day, until one day you feel so overwhelmed that you have given up tackling any of your things on your to-do list. And you're just, you know, you, you throw your hands up in the air and you don't know what to do. Are you piling up on things on your to-do list? Are you piling up on messes in your house? Are you piling up on things that need to be tackled, things that need to be discussed, things that need to be sorted in your life, whatever these might be, in your work, in your relationships, um, in whatever it might be, and not actually tackling them? Because that is also a very, very important expression of self-love and self-care. You take care of yourself by actually taking care of all these pending issues in your life, all these pending things that need doing that you're not doing, that you're putting off for tomorrow and then tomorrow becomes tomorrow and then tomorrow becomes another tomorrow and tomorrow never comes and it never happens, it never gets done and it keeps piling up and it keeps weighing on you and it keeps not being done and there comes a point where you become so overwhelmed that you don't even know where to begin and you end up doing nothing. So it becomes a vicious cycle like that. So this is also another area that you need to look into. Are you actually making room in your life for the good things to happen to you? And it goes hand in hand with self-love and self-care and committing to being the best version of yourself for all the blessings that you want to come in, into your life, okay? And by the way, when we talk about messes, it doesn't always have to mean physical messes or things that need to be tackled. Maybe you're very good at that. Maybe though you have emotional messes. Now, a lot of the time, the physical messes with the emotional and the mental messes are actually related and 
in a lot of cases, people who deal and struggle with physical messes, they also have emotional messes. But it doesn't have to be the case. Maybe you don't have any physical messes, or maybe you're very good at tackling them, but maybe your physical, your, sorry, your emotional and mental energy is actually tied up to the wrong things. Maybe you're putting all your focus and your attention on all the things that you don't want. Maybe you are fretting too much and dwelling too much on all the unwanted circumstances and you're overthinking them and overanalyzing them in your head and getting upset about them and getting triggered and discussing them with other people and maybe they're keeping you up at night. Whatever it might be, this could very well be tying up your energy to all the wrong things. And then again, just like with the physical messes, you are not allowing room in your life, in your energy, for all the good blessings to come in, for the things that you actually want. So it's a matter of committing to being the best version of yourself, to giving yourself the best life, loving yourself and valuing yourself enough to do that for yourself, and also cleaning up all your messes, whether they be physical or mental, emotional, or both, to actually make room in your life and in your energy, to free up your energy to receive to be ready to receive the things that you want. And now the other obvious point that has to do very directly with your specific person who is not committing to you is what we discuss over and over in this channel. How are you perceiving them? What is your dominant inner version of them in your head, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your assumptions, in your beliefs? What is your dominant story about them and your relationship? Because I guarantee you, there is probably something there. There's probably a dominant story that you're holding on to that is not favorable to you, that is not serving you, that says that they don't love you, they don't like you enough, they don't want to commit to you. Um, maybe you're telling yourself that they're a womanizer, if they're a man, or maybe you're telling yourself that um, they don't want to settle down. Maybe you're telling yourself that uh, they don't want to choose you, you don't feel chosen, you don't feel prioritized. Uh, maybe you're, you're even telling yourself, oh, they're too busy right now, they're not ready to commit, you know, they have too much work, they have other priorities right now, that they're too young, too old, whatever. You know, we can come up with a million excuses and we can come up with a million assumptions and limiting beliefs, but at the end of the day, we need to watch what our dominant stories are within because this is what ends up manifesting in our 3D reality. So if you're in a situation with a specific person, whatever the situation might be, friends with benefits, um, dating but not committing, um, living together but not proposing, whatever the commitment might be, even, even married but perhaps not being entirely exclusive with you, whatever the situation might be, I guarantee you, you probably have a dominant story about yourself, and that person and your relationship with that person that is not serving you. So this is where you come in as a conscious manifestor and you change the story. You change the dominant story, you change your dominant assumptions, you change your energies, your dominant energies towards that person and you start seeing them as the version of themselves that you actually want to see them as. The version of themselves that you actually deserve and the version of themselves that is a better version of themselves a more loving, a more committed, um, a more devoted version, more affectionate version perhaps, you start seeing them as that version in your imagination and persisting in that. Persisting in that, persisting in that, until it becomes dominant within and until it starts feeling natural. And this is when things are going to start shifting in the 3D reality for you. And another very important point that is very closely tied to what I just discussed, you need to trust your person to want to be that better version of themselves, to be able and capable of becoming that new version of themselves that you're manifesting. And you need to live in that end, that you are already in a committed relationship. You need to feel like the person who has that committed relationship, who has that commitment from their specific person, who is in a loving, exclusive, secure, safe relationship with them, who is very content with their personal lives and with their person. and. A person who, is, who actually trusts the other person to be that version of themselves. Because what a lot of us do, and to an extent it's normal, but I've said that before, as conscious manifestors, we need to rise above that, okay? 
we stick to what we see in the 3D. And that's a problem because the 3D always shows us uh, dominant assumptions, dominant beliefs. And if we have any kind of a backstory of limiting or limiting beliefs with that person, that is going to reflect in our 3D. And so if we keep dwelling on that, and if we don't realize that it's actually a mirror of what we have within, and we keep dwelling on it and persisting in that story and complaining and getting upset and getting triggered, guess what? We're just going to continue seeing more of it and more of it and more of it. And it might even get worse. So if you want a commitment from your specific person or a committed relationship or whatever it is that you want, you need to live in that end. You need to feel the same way you would feel if that was already true. What would you be thinking? What would you be assuming, believing, feeling? How would you be carrying yourself? How would you be acting towards them even? So you need to, to change your dominant story about them and about their relationship and start feeling like the person who is committed to. Start feeling worthy of that. Start feeling that you deserve it. Start feeling that you are a catch, that you are a prize and that they are the lucky ones and that they essentially have no choice but to commit to you because they won't find anyone better. So that's why the first part of what I discussed about valuing yourself and giving yourself your best life and committing to yourself to become your best version is very, very, very important because it's going to help you in your self-esteem, in your sense of self-worth, and in actually believing that you are worthy of your specific person committing to you. And it's going to make it much easier for you to actually stick to that story to keep coming back to that story, to make it dominant within you, and to actually believe that it's possible. That yes, you are the person who's being committed to, you are the person who is being chosen, your specific person has chosen you, your specific person wants to be with you, they want to be exclusive with you, they want to commit to you, and also, I'm going to repeat that, trust them, trust them, trust them, trust them to become that version. In a way, you need to commit to that version of them for them to actually reflect that back to you. Okay, don't forget that. That's also very important. So with all that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video here. I intend that this has helped. As always, I very much appreciate you guys being on this channel, watching this content. I very much enjoy making this content for you and I look forward to seeing you all at the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.